polpette di rana pescatrice in sugo al pomodoro. Well, today we have a very special guest and he's going to help me. Never mind, he's going to help me. He's going to cook. I'm going to kind of just chat. And it is Cody Hogan, who's the chef de cuisine at Lydia's Kansas City. Welcome. I mean, you're always on the show when we're filming. You're back there with Amy and you guys are working. But now and then you make your appearances, your cameo appearances. Yeah. And I love having you here. So today, Cody, I know that in Kansas City, you sell a lot of meatballs. They love meatballs. I love the meatballs. But today we're making monkfish fish meatballs. Yeah, this is this is different. Okay, we but can I'm but I'm convert sure, some people. I'm sure they like. So I'm gonna just begin with the sauce and a basic marinara. So has it been busy and hectic uh, at the restaurant? Always. We are in Kansas City now, it's for 16 years, huh? And we started in an area where there was almost nothing. And uh -huh. actually not 16 years, it's 19 years. 19, 19 years. years, my goodness. You're and it's right. expanded restaurants everywhere. Now it really grew a neighborhood. Yeah. Where we have the restaurant, that area is called Crossroads. There was nothing there. Art galleries and this warehouse, beer warehouse, right across from Union Station. And I looked at it, I said, oh, I love this spot. Look, the train going back and forth. And you know, Kansas City was the last depot for the pioneers when they were mm -hmm. over the Rockies, right? Yes. So that's how Kansas City flourished because it would furnish all the pioneers that would ultimately go over the Rockies. So I kind of found it very romantic, you know? I'm an immigrant looking for a new place to live with the family, so I kind of related. And I said, this is a beautiful spot, open in the front, the railroad tracks, and then a union station. And then I said, oh, we can make a nice restaurant. We can make a little garden. And you're yeah, a good that, gardener. Yeah, a what do we have gardener. in the garden now? Well, this time of year, um, of course, all the herbs are going strong, lots of things. You know, we put a few vegetables because, you know, we find really interesting, especially children, have no idea what their food, where it comes from, what it looks like. They have the herbs, they can smell, they can taste. So, so they, they sit out there and yeah, they play they around. I know when I go there, you know, we have mm -hmm. wooden chairs and all of that. So uh, I kind of made it home, made it a little mm -hmm. Italy. And, uh, you know, people come and we're, we're very, uh, doing very well. And, and thank you, Cody and Dan and the whole staff because it's all about the people. Let's get back yeah, to work. <laughs> I'm smothering the onions. Let me put the... And I'm gonna just rinse this off. You know how I hate to waste anything, anything. anything. Okay. So this is the basis of the sauce for the meatballs. And I'm gonna have this simmer away, but now your turn comes to work and to make the meatballs. This is the monkfish. And monkfish is the ugliest fish you ever wanna see. It has this big face, this big mouth. But the tail, this is the tail, is delicious. It's the poor man's lobster. And so you chop it up just like that. And now how are we gonna dress this? Well, like for most meatballs, we start with um, some leftover bread, but it's been soaked in a little bit of water. And yeah. so we will squeeze out any excess water. Now, usually I would uh, soak it in milk. Actually, Cody, you know how I love questions. <laughs> and I have, this one is Joan Bear from New Jersey. And she wants to know, some recipes call for milk in meatballs. I've never done this. What is the reason for using milk? Well, we're using water mm -hmm. because I don't think milk is appropriate with the fish. But you can use milk when you do all the meat, meatballs and meatloaves, and it just soaks the bread down and gives it that extra flavor, I think. Mm -hmm. So milk or water, whatever is your liking. Now, how are you gonna season this? Well, we're going to um, bind it a little bit, give it a little richness with some egg here. Mm -hmm. And then parsley, capers. You chopped up the capers a little? Yeah, these are chopped up a little bit. If sometimes if they're too coarse, they sort of the meatballs tend to fall apart a little bit. Now capers and fish go always good oh, together. Beautiful. So it would make sense that in the meatballs like that. Even though there's quite a bit of salt in the capers, let's give it a little salt too. Are you gonna mess up my salt? Oh, here? I mess up your salt. I'm gonna correct it. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want them spicy or should we? Oh, Save well, that what for do you sauce. think? You're making it. Let's do a little spice. A little pepperoncino. Okay, good, good. Oh, that's, okay. that's not so little. <laughs> <laughs> I like to get in here with my hands. That's a good way. You can feel that the more you work it, it starts to uh, bind together. Okay. We're ready to roll I think here? We are. We need a little okay. flour. That'll help when I'll we take, fry. I'll put that take here. Okay. And then I will help you. So we'll roll them once. Mm 
you throw them in, I will roll them. <laughs> well, you know, when you do a commercial kitchen, well, how many people do we do sometimes at uh, Kansas City? You know, anywhere from 200 to 700. It's a, that's a big number. That's a big number. So that's it takes a lot, a lot of meatballs. A lot of meatballs. A lot of hands. A lot of hands involved. And so, so this kind of help you absolutely need. You know, there's an old uh, Italian proverb. There's always an old. <laughs> there always is. You know, there's one when I see such delicious. It's a pancia mia fatti capanna. Do you know what that means? I don't know what. That means. Pancia mia, my mm -hmm. stomach. Become a tent, because I have intentions of eating a lot of these. So, pancha mia fatti capanna. Okay, let's finish rolling them, and then we'll clean up and we'll fry them. Okay, I think the oil is set enough. We're gonna fry the uh, monkfish meatballs. You re-flour them yes. so they really hold together. I think the sauce is just about there. Here I made some polenta. Fish brodetto with polenta always goes good. Mmm, they look quite nice. And we want to give them some nice color. Okay, let me just take this out, drain a little bit of the oil away from it. So, Cody, how many years have you been in Kansas City? About 25 now. I went to Kansas City for graduate school and now, somehow got interested in eating. Now, but your real passion is music. Yes. yes. You actually have a master's in piano. Yes. Composition, playing, or what? Uh, playing. Playing. Uh, so. You still practice now and then? Well, not as much as I used to. Ah, but you know, you can it's... never let go of that passion that you have. Because, you know, cooking is a passion, mm -hmm. is an art in a way. It's making harmonizing flavors, mm -hmm. no? Do you? Yeah, it's definitely a similar process. And how did you get into cooking? Well, I uh, was a Rotary Scholar and studied in Germany for a year and a half. And when I was there, my um, parents, there were uh, retired doctors and they were huge Italophiles. So you were adoptive parents in, in Germany? In Germany, yes. Mm. That was the first place I had tiramisu, was in Germany. They did, <laughs> at that time, it was really popular there. But they, they loved um, Italian culture and they would take trips there. After about a year and a half of eating like that, I was so taken with it. That's what this I decided I wanted to do. This is what you wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I like to, a little bit of pignoli nuts and mm. raisins in the sauce. What do you think? I agree. Okay. I love, especially the, the raisins. I love the sweet quality that it adds. And the raisins I love with fish or with lamb. It kind of gives a, you yeah, kind of a it's juxtapose. A new... It's like music. Yeah. You know, it's a syncop is it it's called a little... syncopation? Oh, could be. <laughs> so I think you keep on mixing that. I think the meatballs can go back in there. Now, Cody, do you know where I come from, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia? Now, Italy has 20 regions. And uh, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia is a region that if you're looking at Italy, it's up in the right-hand corner. It's about an hour north of Venice. And there, we like our polenta, so much so that we are called polentoni. But especially I like it with, with fish sauce like this. Okay, I will wait. The polenta stays hot for a long time. Let me just See how we're going. mix a little bit here. Yeah, I think we are doing just fine. And this sauce looks yummy. That's it, put them in there. Get this out of the way. What is your your biggest pet peeve of your subordinates? Probably the most painful thing is when you have to go around and clean up behind other people. It slows you down. It slows everyone down. In your home kitchen, it's the same way. If you're you know almost to the end of a meal and you have this huge mess in front of you, how could you keep going? You have to stop and clean it up. All right. So I'm going to begin to pour the polenta, and you see how nice yeah, the these polenta. Are nice. Polenta is nice and hot, and polenta retains its heat. And uh, I like my polenta like this, nice and dense. How do you like yours, Cody? I definitely prefer the uh, dense but soft. Okay, so we are, oh, we do a little dancing here. <laughs> but it falls into place. Okay. So what do you think of? Oh, I, think oh. we're, I think we're there, nothing sticking. Okay, okay. You, you are an artist, <laughs> play it for me. Leave this, I think we should, yes. yeah, that's the frame. frame yes. That's the frame. And I think, how would you do this presentation? Just like this, I would do it just like that. 
And if we've made this for all of them, we might have to make some for us as well. Oh, I have plates ready. So, so make a nice presentation here. Hmm. Would you like it like this? Or, yeah. This one, you would do one in the center? Right. Okay. And uh, a little bit of the sauce, but I will put it in between because the, the meatballs look so nice like this. Don't you think so? That's it. Go ahead. Do you want to scrape this yeah, little, little polenta? This is sometimes the best stuff that's left in okay, the Okay, scrape it all up. And for me, mm -mm. that's good enough for me. Okay. Yeah, one. The one star. Is okay. It almost smells like lobster, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Let's taste a little bit. Mm. Nice and moist. Wow, so light. But you know what, really Cody? Light. We have a lot. Mm. And you and I are gonna eat and you're gonna drink. We have a whole bottle here. But we're gonna invite them, okay? Do you know what I say at the end of the show? I've heard it a few times. Okay, are you gonna invite, are you gonna invite <laughs> Certainly. them? Okay. Tutti a tavola a mangiare. You got it. Come and join us. To learn more about Lydia, access to videos, and to get recipes, tips, techniques, and much more, Visit us online at LydiasItaly.com.